growing up in Ireland, one of the most iconic liveries in the world is martini. It was a golden age of racing, golden age of rallying. It harks back to the time of a sponsor, not 20 sponsors. In that regard, the whole car livery is pulled together. It's done nicely. It's visually very appealing. Lancia was a, was a very, very interesting manufacturer with Abarth. They produced world-class rally cars and world-class insurance cars roughly at the same time. So you went from Beta Monte Carlo, which was a uh, sports car championship winning car, to the LC1, which is an endurance car, which won you know, Nuremberg Ring. And then you went from that to the LC2, which is you know, a Ferrari V8 making upwards of 800 horsepower, twin turbo, very classic looking Group C car. The Beta Monte Carlo is a very classic looking silhouette Group 5 car. And in the middle of the two of them is this LC1, which is an open car with side skirts. It has to be part of the collection because it's part of that evolution. They were very successful with the Beta Monte Carlo and they were very successful with the LC1 because the LC1 could be described as an evolution of the Beta Monte Carlo, where the LC2 was just a complete brand new chassis. It was a complete brand new engine. The interesting thing is they took a lot of the learning from the Beta Monte Carlo and sort of transferred it into the LC1. That's why the LC1, even though there's only four of them, it's an important part of the story. A small manufacturer, granted it had the might of Fiat behind it, but still they were operating on a slim budget, Abarth and Lancia, but to produce world-winning rally cars and world-winning endurance cars at the same time was certainly a feat that hasn't been duplicated since. Lancia LC1 was developed as a Group 6 car for the history buffs. The Group 6 lasted about 10 minutes, pushed it aside in favor of Group C, higher displacement cars. This particular car, it's four cylinder, just shy of 1500 cc's with a big turbo. There was four cars built. The particular car is chassis number two. The majority of the cars are either in the Lontal or the Delara Museum. Really, really interesting car to drive, given the fact it's low displacement and four and a half, five thousand RPM is when it goes from 100 horsepower all the way up to 450 horsepower. It's different driving style insofar as you're managing to the turbo, you're keeping the RPM up. So as you go into corners and come out of corners, but it responds very, very well. And the car won Nuremberg outright in 82. If you think about that up against everything else it was racing, for the size of the engine and the fact that there was only four cars, so there wasn't an enormous amount of development behind the car, that's quite important. Process. It's not stick the key and hit the button. Or it's not hook up five laptops, have 15 engineers remap the engine because the humidity has gone from you know 75% to 80%. It's not that. This car built in 1981. It's a lot of management of turbo. Now, that seems to suggest that you're spending a lot of time looking at boost gauges and RPM gauges, but you feel the car, you hear the car, and it becomes a very, very natural response to the car. You have to be braver than the car, because if you're not, the car's gonna start shuddering because it's kind of not on turbo, not off turbo. You gotta be a little, I wouldn't say rough with the car, because that sounds like you're not respecting the vehicle. You gotta be assertive is the word. You're not gonna do a lot of engine braking, given the engine's about that big. So as you get to the end of the straight, you're managing your RPM, you're managing your braking, because you don't wanna go into that last turn with no boost. Back then was it was pure. You don't have a lot of drivers' aids. 
you're not relying on an enormous amount of telemetry back to the pits. You're in the car, it's you. Telemetry is a pit board telling you where the other guys are. I like that. Now, I have a huge respect for Formula One today, but I've always been attracted to, I would say, pure cars. That's not a lot of telemetry. That's no electronics, that's no active suspension, that's no traction control, it's you and the car. Being very, very careful here and being very, very respectful, it's a different skill. You felt the car, you control the car, and it was a completely different set of skills. And it would be very interesting if you sort of took a world-class driver today and you put him in a car from the early 80s, or you took an early 80s driver, a Teo Fabio or a Patrese or any of those guys, and you put them in a modern car. That would be a sort of interesting juxtapose. But I think if you're driven by speed and you're driven by the passion, you'd adapt very fast because that's what you grow into. But I like the vintage, I like the early 80s, I like those cars. Smell of gasoline, smell of race fuel, the history of the cars, the people who built them, the people who drove them, the people who fixed them, uh, it's a complete throwback. You can go out and you can buy a 488 GT car tomorrow, and that does everything exceptionally well. But I'm not looking for that speed, I'm looking for the experience. I'm looking for the car coming out of the trailer, I'm looking for going through it, gassing it up, I'm looking for the whole experience. That's for me what it's all about, having the team here, putting some of the young Irish drivers in some of these cars that were built 15 years before they were born.